to each and every one of us. We thank you, Lord, that you've made provisions that if we do sin, if we do wrong, we can repent and confess and get it cleared and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And then if we hurt ourselves physically, you have provided healing. And we thank you for that healing right now. That you're healing the hurts and the wounds uh, of so many of your people, so many of your people that have because of maybe what people have said or what they've done or what they didn't do. And we want to thank you that we understand each other, that we're all in a healing process. We're all in a sanctification process. Nobody has arrived yet. And so we can be, uh, we can give understanding to one another. And we thank you for that now as your word have free course in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Okay, our first scripture is in 1 Timothy chapter 3. Let's start with um, verse 14. I put it on the board. And uh, let me say this. As the word of God comes forth, I am not after anybody. Everybody look at me. I am not after anybody. God is. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about me. I'm just God's spokesman or whoever else is up here. We speak at this time for the Lord. This is God's business. This is God's design that we have teachers, that we have preachers, we have the fivefold ministry. So just remember, don't throw bricks at the speakers. Thank God we have speakers that will speak the truth. Sometimes I'd like to have all the women back there in this back room with us men because I tell you, the Word of God has come, and I know the Word of God comes back there too. I'm not saying it's not. But I tell you, the Word of God through our men, different ones, bring the Word of God. And I tell you, the Word of God is sharper. I said sharper than any two-edged sword. Have you noticed that? So if you feel a little cutting, don't get mad at the speaker. Just thank God your word is powerful, full of power, and it cuts like a two-edged sword. Are we ready to read? Although, now Paul is speaking here. And when you read the scripture, God, had, uh, God through Paul and through the teachers do a lot of correcting. People say, I, I sure wish we could be like the first century church. No, you don't. If you've read this Bible like I've read it, I think most of you have, they had a lot of problems. And so don't think that, that uh, because you might have a few problems in your own marriage or in your family or even in the church that, that we're somehow out of balance. The object is that we all stay in agreement and come into unity and don't quench the Holy Spirit. Everybody listen to what I just said. <clears throat> what we say, what we do can quench the Holy Spirit. This is God's house. We are the body of Christ and we have to learn not to quench the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, I wish I could say that everybody in here was, was perfect in their conduct. But unfortunately, I can't. I'm the only one. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I just had to say that. I just had to say that. Now, I'm just checking out your discernment. You know that ain't true. But look what it says. Although I hope, and Paul is talking, to come to you before long. This is what Paul's talking to the Philippians, uh, to, to, um, to Timothy. He says, I am writing these instructions to you so that, why are you writing those instructions, Paul? Well, look at the next verse. For I am detained, next verse, if I am detained, you may know how people are to conduct themselves in the household of God. Everybody look at the board. How are you conducting yourself in the household of God? Bob, how are you conducting yourself in the household of God? <sighs> hmm. Which is the church of the living God? Whew, that's us. 
the pillar and stay the prop and support of the truth. It's one thing that I want every minister in here, teacher, whatever your call is, when you bring this word, you bring truth. And if I have to bow, I want you to look at me. Everybody look at me. Look at me. Don't look away. You're not here. You're not. Some of you aren't hearing me back there. Is everybody hearing me back there? Look at me. Not the people on my right. Look at me. You look so pretty when you look at me. <laughs> That's one thing that I want to mention. That when somebody is teaching, and if you've ever taught, you will understand what I am saying. How many teachers in here, you got some truths you want to share with people, and then there's somebody in, in, your, in the group is, is talking. Anybody in here guilty of that? Don't raise your hand. Okay, we've got one that raised their hand. It's very simple. It's not complicated. Stop it! Because it quenches the Holy Spirit in the speaker. Did you know how many times I've gone home with my spirit wounded by my word going out and people are looking and talking to one another, always commenting to, uh, uh, on something that's ugly. And it quenches the speakers. And let me say this, it quenches the Holy Spirit and the spirit of that speaker. You know, I love my girls. I got girls on top of girls. And we go out and eat sometimes. And I got something to say. Now, girls, I love all of you. Stay out of trouble, Bob. I'm already a crucified man, so shoot me. Doesn't make no difference. I have to, I have to give them. The, how many knows what this is? Time out. And one of them will see me and they say, oh, dad wants to say something. <laughs> I, love, I just love my girls. So I'll say, I'll say, you know what I want to say. And then they go. <laughs> and they all talk at one time. <laughs> I don't understand that. I can't understand that. Now we're talking about how to conduct ourselves in the house of God. But it should go further than that. It should go, should go into our homes. And one thing that Susan and me have always tried to do with our girls is let each one of them speak, but not all at one time. But they grew up and they lost that teaching somewhere down the road. <laughs> But I still love them. And but I'm saying to the, us in the in, in here, and, and, and I've been guilty too, and I and I repent, believe me, I have repented, and I will continue to repent when I have to, when the Holy Spirit shows me. <clears throat> but when people are talking and trying to teach, be kind, Bob. Be gentle. That's what the Bible says. The man of God is to be gentle, kind, instructing those that oppose themselves. That's in Timothy 2. Pay attention. You might learn something. So I encourage this assembly in the Sunday school class, whatever. Don't be talking why the teacher is trying to teach. Now, how many understand what I just said? Okay, you don't have to have a college degree to understand that. <laughs> you don't have to have a kindergarten degree to understand that. Just do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Man, that's complicated. Or is it? 
No, it's not. That's important because you can wound your teacher spirit and, 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 and quench the Holy Spirit in the speaker. Now, I've preached for a long time and I've taught for many, many years. And I've had people sitting right out there where you're sitting. And, and I'm preaching and teaching and they're talking. I used to have a sword. Or, or, well, we won't bring it out today. It's back in the back now. And I go home with such a wounded spirit. And I have to pray, God, heal my wounded spirit. I don't know why it does that. It just does that. It quinces. It grieves the Holy Spirit in the speaker. Now, and I, see, some people understand. I, I, I noticed uh, Willie back there. He understands. He, he's a teacher. Uh, how many teachers do we have in here? Raise your hand. Some say you're teachers. You've taught. How many understand that that's true? Huh? Yeah, you know. You know. So the Bible talks about respect. How, how many of you know what respect is? Respecting one another. Respecting the teacher. The, the, the teacher has probably spent all week crying and praying and fasting and reading and reading uh, and getting a lesson uh, for the body of Christ. And, and they come in and, and they sit down and, and they, you know, they, you know, they try, try to teach and people are, are talking to one another. Now, don't get me wrong. We have back there our people, uh, the, 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 whoever teaches, if, if we got something, we raise our hand and the teacher recognizes us and, and we share. <coughs> and that's in order. The Bible says do everything decently and in order. <coughs> Paul was not against tongues, but everybody speaking in tongues and, and an unbeliever comes in and they'll think everybody's crazy and nobody's understanding anybody. But if you have a tongue and you bring it forth, make sure there's somebody there to interpret it where we can all know what you're saying. You see? So things have to be done decently and in order. Now, look, let's read that again. If I am detained, Paul is talking. He was wanting to uh, come to, the, to, 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 to Timothy and them. You may know how people are to conduct themselves in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, and the pillar and stay and the prop and the support of the truth. Whew. Do you realize how important we are? You, let, you concentrate on that. You concentrate on that. Uh, years ago, back in the 50s, this little girl was running around the church, and we had some elderly folks uh, back in, in the church in those days, and, and this little girl was running around, and Susan got her and stopped and said, Now, honey, uh, you don't need to run into church because, see, you could run over or hit somebody and cause them to fall, or you could fall yourself and hurt yourself. So uh, don't do that no more. The little girl looked, looked at Susan, turned around, and went. Well, that evening, Susan got a phone call. It was her grandma, that is, the little girl's grandma. Who do you think you are to correct my granddaughter if she wants to run it's fine with me. If I'd have been on the phone, I probably would have said, <laughs> back in those days, I know what I would have said. <laughs> well, bless your little heart, honey, it ain't fine with me. <laughs> but Susan, with her grace and her smile and her love, Explain to dear grandma why she didn't want the little girl to run because we have people that, that are up in years now and if she runs into one of them, I mean, it can really hurt somebody. But you know, this grandma was old enough to know something. 
Why don't you ever do it again? I tell you, if you do, it sounds like she's speaking in tongues. I couldn't interpret that hardly, but I could interpret her spirit. How many could interpret this? You see, see it, something so simple. You know, the Bible says only a fool does not receive correction. I think people over here love me. I'm going to get over here. I'm stay away from that crowd. <laughs> oh, Bob, don't speak truth. Just let us kill each other. It's okay. It's the household of God. It doesn't matter. Let people do whatever. Now, you know, it, it, it's a different one. It's different when the Spirit of God is on somebody. I, I know when the Spirit is on somebody. And, and sometimes it's like, wow, man, it's really getting rough in here. That's different. But I'm talking about when people are carnal and, and they have carnal natures that are in control of their life and they have not bridled their tongue yet and they need what Proverbs says, you need a bridle put on you to control you. Now listen, I am not a mean man, and most of you know it, and I've been, I've helped every one of you in here in some way in my life. And we cry, and we pray, and we intercede, and we have fasted for everybody in the body of Christ, and we love people. Now you might say, well, Bob, you know, we're not like that here. How many remember me saying that we're preaching to the whole world now? How many remember that? Well, now I'm going to jar your memory. On the internet, we're preaching to the whole world. Are you listening? We, this little body of believer, is preaching through the internet to the whole world. Wow, that's powerful. So we've got to remember when I say, yes, it's for us, and it's very simple. If you're guilty, repent, confess it, and then stop it. Very simple. It's not complicated. We don't need four or five years of, of, of counseling to learn something so simple by conducting ourselves in the household of God as God's people. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 This is good preaching, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Now, if the old man is in control, you're probably out there fo foaming right now at the mouth. Anybody foaming at the mouth right now? Because <laughs> the carnal man can't stand this. That's okay. We, we, we love you anyway. <laughs> Let's go to the next verse. There we go. And great and important and weighty, we confess, is the hidden truth the uh, mystic secrets of godliness. He, God, was made visible in human flesh, justified and vindicated in the Holy Spirit, was seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world, and taken up in glory. Now that's our Savior, and that's our Lord. The next scripture, I want to turn to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Let's start with verse 2. Now Paul is talking again. He's talking to the Philippians. He's saying, I entreat and advise. Now those are two hard names. Somebody get help me. Come on. Erodia, that's close, and I entreat and advise Sisachi to agree and to work in harmony in the Lord. Anybody want to put any names in there? <laughs> Husbands and wives, they, you could put... Now here's, now let, let me break it down to simplicity. It is not complicated. We got two women in the church. Beautiful women. Work hard. Love the Lord. Like two bantam roosters. <laughs> I 
Albert, I like your expression. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> two agree. See, if two will touch and agree on anything and be done for them in heaven, agree, agreeing with one another is important because we're, we are to work in harmony. Now, go to the next verse. If they do not straighten up, this is my counsel to you. Shoot them. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Now, look, he says, and I exhort you to, you to, my genuine yoke fellers, help these two women. Now, he's talking to the Philippians. You got these two women in the church, and they're probably jealousy of one another, competition, uh, one wants to have the power, dominate and control. And they're beautiful people. They're beautiful workers. They worked with Paul. Can you imagine working with Paul? But they're causing trouble. Look what it says. Help these two women to keep on cooperating. Everybody say cooperating. For they have toiled, and Paul is saying, now they have toiled along with me in the spreading of the good news, the gospel, as have Clemens and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Now, unfortunately, I've been around too long. But I've learned a lot, and I've seen this. These women that we have here that Paul's talking about, they loved God. They just had trouble with one another. <laughs> if you don't love your brother who you see, how can you love God? You know, Willie is really... We're going to lock the door next week. Uh, you know, <laughs> if we don't come out of that door back there, y'all just go along with the service as, you, as God leads. But he, he's nailing us all to the cross. <laughs> and, and we all realize it's important. Because if we don't get rid of this little thing right now that, that is festering up in us, that we got to be number one, and we got to be it on a stick, you know, the only thing you can do with somebody it on the stick is to just turn the stick upside down. <laughs> Let me tell you, church, and I am, I'm serious here. God gives grace to the humble. You're trying to exalt yourself. If I'm trying to exalt myself, it's, it, God is going to deal. God will deal. I've read the Bible from cover to cover. Sometimes I don't want to preach on certain things because I try to preach on the resurrected side. You know, I've been doing that. But sometimes we have to get and, and do some correction. And if you're never corrected, you know, that tells me something. Don't you think you ever get too big, you can't be corrected? And that's for me, too. That's for me, too. Don't ever think. I had one man raise his hand back there. Thank you, Willie. You're keeping me alive, son. <laughs> help these two women. I hope we'll have people in here that will help any two women or two men that seem to be clashing with one another to stop and say, what does God say? Love them as I have loved you. We're talking about, we're talking about in the Bible says those that are strong in the Lord are to bear with the weak. That's in uh, Romans 15. Chapter 1. In fact, put that on the board. Romans 15 verse 1. We
We who are strong. Do we have any strong folks in here? Get them, Lord, get them. <laughs> All right, now listen. How many understand what I'm talking about? Now, ain't I kind? I'm very kind, ain't I? You, you see, but I mean what I say. Now look what it says. He who are strong in our convictions and of robust faith are to shoot those that are weak. Oh, I'm sorry. To bear with the failings of and the frailties and the tender scruples of the weak. So if we have people in, uh, in the church that don't know how to conduct themselves in the church, we have to consider that there's a certain amount of uh, carnality operating in their life, and they just don't know how to walk in the Spirit and to love people. Now, you say, yeah, but Bob, you don't know. Oh, yes, I do know, too. I remind you that while you were a sinner, Christ died for you. Wow. He, he didn't die for us while we were perfect. Now, I, I got some news for some of you in here. Now, I don't want you to fall out your chair. You might, you might hurt the flow. But there's nobody in here have reached a level of perfection. But you know what? We sung that song and God heard it. What was it seduce me to love or change me? So you may be going through some rough times. Instead of cursing the darkness, light the candle. And rejoice that God is dealing with your old man. If I may say, is ugly. When you see it in the spirit. Ugly. I am so glad that I married a wife that knows how to perfect a man. How many women in here are still trying to perfect your husband? <laughs> Yeah, you tried, but you failed. And you finally said, Lord, you do it. It's too big a job for me. But I tell you what, she helps God. Yes, sir. And I appreciate it. Look what it says. Bear with the failings. You mean people have failings in the church? Oh, you shocking me, preacher. Yes. Look at the person that say you got failures. And if they say, and if they say, huh, me? Just lay your hands on them gently. <laughs> I love it. Both hands while you're at it. <laughs> and just pray for them. And the frailties and the tender scruples of the weak. We are to help carry the doubts and the squirms of others and not... To please ourselves. But you know, the Apostle Paul said something that about weakness. He says, when I am weak, then I am strong. Because see, once God shows you and me our weaknesses, we humble ourselves. And God says, now I'll raise you up. Because see, as long as we have that strength of the old man, we'll do it ourselves. See, we don't need the Holy Spirit in here. I'll take charge, and I'll run the whole nine yards. And God has to deal because he loves us. Because he wants us to enjoy the life of Christ. He wants us to enjoy the resurrected life of Christ. So he deals with us and shows us where we think we're strong, we're really weak. And we go down, and what happens is, in us, he goes up. See, God's ways are not man's ways. Now, go to the next verse. 
I like that last one, not to please ourselves. Ooh, not to please ourselves. Well, I like it this way. Well, I do too, but uh, God says let's do it this way. See, self has to get out of the way. Let each one of us make it a practice to please and make happy his neighbor or his brother and sister in the Lord or husband or wife for his good and for his true welfare. Notice, to edify him, to strengthen him, to build him up spiritually. That's our job. Not to expose the person's weakness and everybody else and, and dampening and poisoning them. With your insecurities or your uh, ambitions to be number one, we're to edify and be an edified edifier. I preached on that many years ago, learning to be an edified edifier. Look at the next one. For Christ did not please himself. Meditate on that. Gave no thought to his own interests. But as it is written, the reproaches and abuses of those who reproached and abused you fell on Jesus. So when somebody abuses you, talks about you, it fell, it falls on Jesus. That's what, that's what that says. It falls on Jesus. And he bored it. Now, Here's the thing about it. Jesus said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. When you can go ahead and let people talk about you, say all manner of things against you, then your job is to drop their atomic bomb on them. And that'll teach them. Turn to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Let's start with verse 7. I can't believe it's 1 o'clock. I'll do my best. Okay. Remember your leaders and superiors in authority. For it was they who brought to you the word of God. Observe attentively. And consider their manner of living, the outcome of e their well-spent lives, and imitate their faith, their convictions, that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, and the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ. And their leaning of the entire human personality on on his power and wisdom and goodness. So a leader should be definitely one that sets the example. And I want to share this other scripture. Now. We've run out of time. And I have so many of them. But 2 Timothy 2.22. 2 Timothy 2. We'll close on this. <coughs> Let's start with verse 24. 2 Timothy 2, 24, 25, 26, and we'll close. Now, here's some instructions for the teachers and the leaders. And the servant of the Lord must not be quarrelsome, fighting and contending. Everybody know what that is? Instead, he must be kindly to everyone and mild-tempered, preserving the bond of peace. He must be a skilled and suitable teacher, patient and forbearing, and willing to suffer wrong. I quit. <laughs> like Susan did with that... Uh, Pastor's wife. She was willing to suffer wrong and God justify her. Go to the next verse. 
He must correct. And there's times, let me tell you something. If you, teachers or anybody that's teaching, Susan has to do that in the nursery. Sometimes take the kid to the one side. You got somebody causing trouble in your uh, class? After this, you just get with them after the class and you talk with them. Tell them you love them, but what you're doing is uh, erupting and, and bringing confusion in, in, in the atmosphere <coughs> and in, in this class. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? And, and, if, if he's, and if the teacher does that, don't get mad and make your lips stick out. Come under, obey. Well, I know I'm right. Well, you may be right, but you never say nothing evil about one of God's teachers. Because God, you know why? Because God take care of them. Do you understand that? Don't let it roll off your little head now and play like you, you know, you dumbfounded. He must correct his opponent with courtesy and gentleness in the hope that God may grant that they will repent and come to know the truth, that they will perceive and recognize and become accurately acquainted with and acknowledge it. Notice that. God gets in there. God will grant, grant them. And so we have to love people. And if you are a teacher, a minister, you have to be willing to suffer wrong. The Bible says, endure suffering, hardships, as a good soldier of the Lord. Everybody listening? So don't moan and groan about it. And if you're somebody that's causing trouble by your mouth, stop it. Repent. And do what's right, and God will bless you. And most of our people are doing great and wonderful, and I appreciate all that people do at the Shield. You are a blessed people and a beautiful people. But help each other out. When you see somebody that's going off on the wrong, just step in there and say, let's just pray for them. Grab them by the hand like Susan did. Let's pray for them. Father, we pray now that if we have heard the message and if we are someone that's causing trouble, we know that you see everything. And I thank you, Father, for that correction. And Lord, if the teacher's doing wrong, then you'll deal with the teacher. And if the, and if the student is doing wrong, you'll deal with them. So, Father, we thank you. You do that because you love us. And we just want to thank you now for the victory. And Lord, we want to thank you.